Hey guys, this is Zach from Motocrane, and in this video, we're gonna walk through our latest control solution for Motocrane, the compact controller. Now, the main difference between the compact controller and the extended controller you see here is its size. The compact controller is much smaller, which makes it more suitable for situations where you might have an arm operator working in a confined space, like the cargo area of a vehicle, or maybe a UTV side-by-side -side type situation. The other main difference is that the compact controller features a single dual axis joystick where the extended controller has dedicated joysticks for lift and swing. Now, the compact controller has all the same arm position monitoring, settings, and diagnostics features of the extended controller, but it's instead navigated via this rotary push knob. And then next to that, you'll see adjustments for speed, smoothing, and inversion of each axis. The other thing that you'll notice here is that we have a new error warning button, which immediately takes you to display any current errors or warnings displayed by the system. Um, on the side, you'll notice we have a USB port, which makes firmware updates really easy. Um, and then we have uh, four quarter 20 mounting points on the back, another mounting point on the top, and then also a familiar disarm switch, which cuts power to the motor circuits, making it safe to work around the arm. So now that we've gone through the physical characteristics of the compact controller, let's plug it in, power it on, and get into the menus. So now that I have the compact controller connected to the PSU, I'm able to get it powered on. For the demo here, I'm running everything off of our UPC. And once the compact controller gets booted up, it's gonna bring us to the operate screen, which if you've ever used the extended controller is gonna be a pretty familiar layout. Uh, we have some power parameters up here. Uh, we're able to see stored UPC energy, whether or not our e-stop is engaged. And then unique to the compact controller is limits visualization. So because I have limits configured for each of the two axes, I'm able to see where those limits actually are. So as I run the system, I'm able to see how close or far away I am from a limit that I'm sensitive to. And moving on to diagnostics here, I'm able to choose between system or UPC diagnostics. I'm gonna go into system and within this, we'll find parameters like uh, motor temperature, driver temperature, um, and also this info button, which shows me which firmware versions are loaded onto each of the modules that are connected. So now going back to diagnostics, I'm gonna go into UPC. And uh, again, this is a familiar uh, layout if you've ever seen this on the extended controller. And I'm able to monitor each of the V-mount batteries individually, and also look at my charge monitor and my power core. And these parameters are specific to the UPC. Now lastly, within diagnostics, I'm able to check out our system log, which is gonna capture any past errors or warnings that have been flagged by the system until you clear them. So if something were to happen on your chute, maybe you didn't catch it right away, um, it's gonna be stored here until you clear it. Now this is different from our error and warning hard button that is on the controller, which if you're ever operating and you get an error or a warning, this button will illuminate, you're gonna get a chime from the controller, and when you push it, it's gonna navigate you immediately to the active errors uh, within the GUI. So moving on to settings now, uh, we're able to do all of our limits configuring and limits enabling, but unique to the compact controller is the individual adjustment of dead band for each of the two axes. And this is because on the compact controller, we have one joystick. So this allows us to control and mitigate any crosstalk if we're doing a compound move where we're trying to keep the movement to one axis. And if I go to my advanced settings here, I'm able to do some more calibration and configuration. Um, and then at the bottom, I'm able to go into my INS tuning. So this is where I turn INS stabilization on and off. Um, I can check on the status of my INS sensor module and the gyro specifically, um, see my performance monitoring of INS advanced stabilization and do my tuning. So if you guys have any questions about the compact controller or if it's gonna be suitable for your application or just any general questions about Motocrane, make sure you get in touch. Thanks.